Today is the 4th of June and um, it is only a day past the anniversary of the June 3rd disaster, June 3rd, 2005. And I've been reflecting on June 3rd, also in the, the, the broader context of everything going on um, in our world today. And as I think about those victims and I'm taken back to that time, I wanted to share with all of you how central and pivotal um, that disaster was in me going ahead to write my book, The Bold New Normal. And I'm going to um, read to you an excerpt from the introduction, which is also read at the book launch and I'm dedicating this reading to the victims of June 3rd that we lost, but also to all the many people whose lives were torn apart, who are rebuilding their lives, and some of whom the rebuilding process has, has actually not, um, is not over. They're still rebuilding their lives. Um, so here we go. The Bold New Normal. Introduction, page 17. And it, this starts with, a, um, with an extract of the introduction that reads, Madam, if you want anything to change, you have to get into the gutter with the people. A young driver delivering a life lesson. When the Caribbean was hit by hurricanes in 2017, News networks across the globe carried the story. The news coverage conveyed compassion. The news coverage conveyed compassion for the great loss people were experiencing. I could relate. For one, my mother-in-law is from the Caribbean. Secondly, it had been only a couple of years since torrential rain and subsequent flooding had led to an explosion in Accra that killed almost 200 people on the spot. It was the most horrific scene I had ever seen. Accra, Ghana's capital, is a low-lying city which, op which opens out to the sea. A growing population and challenged enforcement of urban planning had left the city with waterways that could not deal with the sheer volume of rain. Waterways were now largely inundated with refuse. All this was exacerbated by the growth in the density of people living in the city. To be honest, flooding had become a perennial problem in Accra. The fa that fateful night, the 3rd of June 2015, was one of the most intense experiences for me as a business leader. Parts of the city were under siege. I was fortunate to live close enough to our business office to have made it home long before any of us realised how intense the night would be. I called back to the office to check on people and found out that we had, we had staff stuck in the office. Imagine going to work with a plan to go home at the end of the day, only to realise that you were stuck for the night. I had to make a plan. I got some staff over to my house for the night while others, who prefer to remain in the office, were happy with food supplies. It was the least I could do. The next day, we found out that we had been the lucky ones. One of the worst hit areas was around the Kwame Nkrumah, was around the Kwame Nkrumah Circle, named after the first president of Ghana. People had parked their cars at the petrol station. They were waiting for the rain to subside so the roads would become more passable. The ground around them was flooded. It turned out that an underground fuel tank was also flooded, causing fuel to rise to the surface. And somehow, in the vicinity was an open flame. A spark meets highly flammable fuel. An explosion follows. The station and its environs caught fire. Everything was on fire. Everything. I pause as I write because the images come flooding back. 
And now I pause as I read because the images come flooding back. I only watched on TV and wish I could unsee what I saw. People, people of Ghana, my people, burnt alive. Using the words charred bodies makes me squeamish. Yet there they were, charred in the aftermath of the explosion. Even through the screen, the pain was palpable. How do you comfort a woman who loses her grip on her child only to later realize that her child is gone for good? As you look into her eyes through the screen, you wish there was more that you could do than just empathize. So you can understand my intrigue with the news, with the, Cari with the Caribbean news reports. I was intrigued that in the midst of all the pain and loss, the news reports of the Caribbean disaster were also immediately and equally concerned with estimates of how much it would cost to rebuild. Rebuild, yes. This was a natural disaster. Yes, the impact would have would have to be assessed and lessons learned. But it had all but it all had to be rebuilt. Why did I not hear this over the June 3rd disaster? I dedicate my reading to the memories of the lives lost and I challenge the rest of us to say, why aren't we doing enough to create lasting change? If something goes wrong, if people are impacted, why aren't we fixing and changing? Within our spheres of influence, we all have a role to play. May the, their sacrifice and their loss not be in vain. And may we also try to map out and look out for other areas of our country and of our lives that we can proactively fix. May they all rest in peace and may all those who are rebuilding their lives have the support they need. Thank you.